Hey there, it's Derek from Pacific Coast Auto here. Uh, we're looking at a car we bought from auction. Uh, this one we're going to be shipping over to Canada through New Westminster. Uh, this is a uh, four-wheel drive Toyota Grand Hiace with the extended roof on the top. Camping car, kind of a simple camping car. And inside comes with a sink. It comes with the two beds, one that will go up above with a very cool way that you take your bed pieces out. I'll show you that when we get inside. And then the interior also has provisions for a bed below, also table and chairs, and one, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seats in it. And this one was bought from auction for the purpose of sending to Canada. It's not for sale, unfortunately. And this is a post-purchase inspection video of it. And so we'll be taking a look at the condition of it, comparing it to the vehicle's auction inspection sheet here. And so it's a long, longitudinal mounted engine. It's the 3.4 liter engine that uh, I believe is in your guys' Tacoma. But a pretty common, reliable, high torque engine, typically used in trucks and things like that. It's going to give a decent amount of power for this. Although it's going to be heavier than your regular version of the Grand Hyace, it's still going to be uh, reasonably peppy, pretty good on fuel economy, and then very reliable as Toyotas are known to be, but especially Toyota truck engines. Okay, now coolant and oil both look like in tip-top condition. This has just under 140,000 kilometers. Timing belt was changed in 2005, I'm sorry, 2015, at uh, 101,846 kilometers. Okay, going to close the hood here. And now that you guys have seen the engine running condition, I'm going to turn it off. Not before I show you the cool side exit exhaust there. That's kind of funny. Uh, this one does have a um, solar panel on the roof, sub battery in it, and a plug in to plug it into the exterior. And uh, I guess more on that in just a second. First, going to go over the auction inspection sheet here. So bear with me for a sec while I translate this from Japanese into English. It's a 2004 Grand Hyace. 3.4 liter gasoline engine. A lot of the campers here in Japan are diesels, but this one's gasoline. Auction grade four with an interior B, and it's um, the four wheel drive is auto four wheel drive. You can see that the hubs automatically select for you, and so it makes it easy for someone who just wants to go places and doesn't necessarily need the four wheel drive all the time, but when they need it, they can stay in the camper nice and warm. Okay, so this is a, a camping car, and this is just the, uh, the sales points here. A camping car, it comes with a navigation system, with TV tuner and a reverse camera. And the TV tuner lets you watch TV here in Japan, but outside of Japan won't work for our watching TV, obviously. A sliding door. And uh, that sliding door just on this side, I believe. Let me just check. Yep. Okay. Toll collection box for Japanese highways, four wheel drive, rear heater, so that when the car is off, you can still run the heater. And, um, Hmm, what does this say? Oh, stainless steel sink. It's kind of a weird thing to write there. Yes, it is a stainless steel sink. It's uh, it's not that big, but I'll show you when we get into there. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm sorry, I can't read this one. Now, before, just, just to let you know, when we're bidding on the cars, you'll get this translated by a Japanese person. My Japanese is really not that good, so. Uh, high roof here, two bed version. And it looks like it, uh, they're just saying that this is, uh, an aftermarket manufacturer of the, the camping part. Um, you can see it says Grand Horse on it, which sounds pretty funny, but it really fits in with the Japanese style of making English on everything, even if it doesn't make sense. Okay, so this one was purchased from the user, and here's the important part here is the inspection from the auction and their body diagram there. So we'll have a look at that. So it says there's a steering wheel cover on the steering wheel. I personally don't really like those steering wheel covers. It helps protect the steering wheel possibly, but I don't like the feeling of them. Underside surface rust, and nothing problematic in my opinion. Uh, camping section might have parts missing, so the inspector doesn't know about that. And seat, steering wheel wear, interior slightly dirty. It's actually very clean in this one. I'm very happy about that. Especially camping cars, you never really know when you buy them at auction. Very scratches, dents, and repairs. Dashboard has glue marks on it, and then it says after. Um, hmm. 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 Can't read it. Something about the suspension. Again, uh, if you are the owner of this, please refer to your real translation instead of the ghetto one that I'm doing right now. So body diagram, the front bumper is pretty messed up. A3 is a large scratch, paint cracks on here, and uneven paint, windshield rock chip. And it says a big scratch on the roof. 
you can maybe kind of see it. It's right here. But it's quite light and it looks a lot better than your typical A3, which would be the top level scratch. Now on the side panels, you have a couple of dents, but nothing really big. The biggest one, let me just show you here, is right here. And then a couple of other things. Before that truck comes to run me over, I'll show you. Scrape there, and a scratch there. And, oh no, don't run me over! That's the delivery people that deliver like Amazon stuff. Okay, and then the back has some U2. There's actually a bike rack on the back and it looks like the bike rack has possibly dented the back a little bit, but you can't tell because the bike rack's in the way. Also rear bumper paint cracks. And so really the front bumper is the biggest area of damage anywhere on the car. And I'll detail that after we do a quick run once around here. Okay, quite like the looks of this. It's quite modern looking with that uh, new face. These grand high aces are not that common as campers here. After seeing this one, I quite like it. I like the simple campers that are going to give you good fuel economy when you don't need that extra space. Like if you've got a family with kids, a lot of people are going to want the bigger ones. But after the kids go away, if you just want a camper for yourself, a small camper is, can be so much more valuable for you. But you can see the bike rack, it folds down. And uh, you can stand up inside this one um, if you are 5'10 or shorter. So it's a reasonably high roof. I think the ground, Grand High Ace like this has a lower floor than the regular version of the High Ace, uh, partially because the engine is in front of you instead of underneath you like in the regular version of the High Ace. You can see the solar panel on the roof there, an event piece, and the Grand Horse name. <laughs> Which, if this was my van, I would love that because it's so funny. Get in the grand horse, everybody. It's funny because the word in Japanese for horse is the same as the word for house. And it would make a lot more sense knowing Japanese that uh, somebody would call this grand house. Because it's like camping cars are kind of like houses, right? And so maybe that was an English mistake. They wanted to call it a grand house house so here's a scuff and like i said this front bumper is the worst of any part there's flex cracks here from an ouchie of running into something and then another one here in the center of the bumper uh, bottom section here has some paint cracks and then this corner here is really bad from here all the way down okay now side panels is all looking really good grand horse that one dent i showed you and rear bumper also has some nastiness as was stated on the auction sheet you can see there okay now if you look here the back section here right where it mounts on the bottom has some areas that might be considered dense i don't know looks fine to me there's the camera for your reverse monitor and uh, golden retriever owner very proud of it apparently Van Tech Niigata. Okay. And then this one here is emissions. It says, your emissions is only one out of five stars. This must have been one of the first vehicles when that new system came in. Camping car land from Tsukuba. Cool. Full-time four-wheel drive. Don't have to select anything. Okay, so let's go into the front interior. And we'll go into the rear interior so soon. I'm sorry if you've been waiting for that, but you can skip ahead in the video if you want, because we're in the age of YouTube now. You can do that. Okay, that has been taped up also here and here and here. So this visor piece, you can remove it if you want, but it's, it's handy to have it on a rainy day. Those are very common in Japanese cars. Okay, so going into the interior, you got a nice healthy door opening. I kind of feel like the Grand High Ace was supposed to be Nissan's version of the El Grand until they could bring an El Grand to, uh, competitor to market, which they did with the Alfard. The Alfard doesn't have camping car versions though, and I think these were more expensive than the Alfard. Well, maybe not. Hmm, not sure. Anyways, uh, we got a cigarette burn here. It doesn't smell like cigarettes at all inside. In fact, it smells like Grandma's house. It smells like the inside of a house of somebody who owns a Cocker Spaniel. I think. Let's pull this out. Okay, so jumping in here, you can see the steering wheel cover. It's kind of like a fake wood 
type thing. You can see there, pretty simple gauges. This section here has the Navi, and this is a special control panel for the camping version because you have controls for the rear heater and cooler. Mind you, when you press the heater, it works. This this light lights up. The cooler light doesn't light up, so I'm not sure if that button is functioning properly. Opening this piece is a cigarette lighter. It's kind of hard to open because the wire is jamming it closed. Ashtray there. Storage box there. No cup holders. A little bit strange. Now you can install your own console here if you really want some cup holders. There are some universal ones and it's a mostly flat ground so it would be easy to do that if you wanted to. Okay and a nice clean headliner here as well and very very comfortable sitting in here. The seat not only is comfortable but it's a very very easy vehicle to drive uh, especially considering the mostly compact uh, dimensions of it and good visibility all the way around. To the interior. Beware of dog. <laughs> what are you going to do? Bark me to death? Okay, so interior here and we'll go over this in, in good detail. And so there's two entrances. You can enter this way or you can enter from the rear section there. Now we have a uh, seat here that is adjustable. Both of these can go all the way up or all the way down, allowing you to have the seat forwards facing or backwards facing. And then the table slides on this section here. So if you want, you can have it set up like this, or you can turn this seat around and have the table right in between and then have this facing forward. And not very many ca uh, campers will allow you to have the, um, the table facing in the other direction but in this case it's really nice because these front seats can spin around by the looks of it let's see if we can figure that out for the regular version of the reclining there yeah so this one here is forward and backward this one here is for spin around so if you want you can spin around your front seats very cool and then you don't need these rear seats at all if you want so this one here you can see is pushed up against the side of the window. It used to look exactly like that one there and to make a full bench from wall to wall here so that you can have, well, one, two, three, possibly four, five, six people all sitting at this table if you needed to. And so plenty of room there. And the fabrics are all in good condition, not like somebody has been sweating on them for years. And you can see that the headrest piece can be taken out and put on the other side if you want it to. Okay, now one of the coolest things about this camper is the way that the bed system functions. So there's the bed for the top, and I'm just gonna go inside here and have a look at the way that this works. Each piece of the bed is on rollers. There's wheels in there like, the, like drawers, and it comes out down here and down here and then in so that everything is always adjusted appropriately and your bed is very easy to take out and put away which is very useful for most campers because when it's time to go to bed a lot of times you don't want to struggle with putting things in you're going to be too tired or maybe had too much to drink to figure things out and so that's uh that's very useful the the finishing on the end is chipped away in some places but this piece here is uh, very easy uh, to replace by the looks of it if you wanted to and I just put the other headrest up here, just unclip these and pull them out. Now most campers have their stand-up part over here, and then the bed will come up to about here, and then you climb in and go. This one's the opposite, your stand-up place is over here. So after you pull these out, they go all the way to the back wall there, and then the place that you can stand up is anywhere from here that way. And so, and then the bed is roughly this high, giving you Oh, probably about 65 or 68 centimeters of room in the top and a little bit more than that in the bottom one here and this one here also very easy to take out you flip this up and then you unclip it it comes down and then you pull it up so very simple the table also you can see it just unclips over there there's your sub battery and your heater 
And then here's a rear heater. It's kind of weird. It has the car's rear heater. Um, here's the car's rear heater. Here's the camper's rear heater. And so it has both. And then you can unclip the table there if you want to take it off. And here's your cup holders. They're just in the back. Okay. Uh, going into this section here, Kenwood audio has been put in. And uh, that's easy to do. Just to turn this. And then there's a fan you can turn on. We have the sub battery turned off, so we can't do that right now. But all of this is in good condition. A lot of times you'll see these will crack and they, they will break because they get brittle over time. That one's in reasonable condition. Okay, so here's your <laughs> stainless steel sink with rust on it, which is kind of funny, but that rust would have come from something else, not the sink itself. Okay, and in here, your water bottle for that. Uh, this one here would be the waste water bottle and I don't know about another water bottle. You might have to put another one in or hook it up to the exterior. I'm not sure. Here's the plug-in. And then the rear heater is in here. There's some sort of uh, piping that was put in by the previous owner. It looks like it doesn't work anymore because it's been ripped. But the idea of that is to move the power of the rear heater up closer to the front of the vehicle. Okay, so some cubby down there. And that seat there will slide forward and back. These ones are stationary, they won't slide, but they can uh, flip up to the side. Both of them do. This one can flip to the side too if you want that uh, put up. And if you had the table on the other side, it would give you a nice little working area here. If you needed to do some cooking in the rain, this table here flips up as well, like that. And I can't put it down one-handed, unfortunately. You can get out the back through here. And it looks like LED lighting up there. And then this gives you easy access to the back section here. And then also protection from the rain if you need it while that's up. Nice strong struts. Keep that up very well. And then you can do your cooking while standing out here if you want. Or put something here while you're prepping it. You have access to the sink. These usually come out. Yeah. So you can go spray your kids if you need to. Or you can spray your friends. It would be funny. Okay, and uh, flooring is all plastic or vinyl, made to look like it's wood. It has a good look to it, I think. And all in all, a, a really good deal for this one. I think it's, it's very reasonably priced. Okay, so there we have it. I'm gonna close this up. And how are we doing for time on this, Mr. Camera? 17 minutes is too long for this video. So if you made it this far, then maybe you're doing something else while you're watching this at the same time. <laughs> I know I do that a lot with uh, YouTube videos. Oh, and this one here, that's just AC, water from the AC system. AC works nice and strong. And here in Japan, because it's ultra, ultra humid, you get an awful lot of water that comes out of cars like that and then doesn't evaporate. Okay, so there you have it. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments section. We don't read all the comments so much anymore just because of the volume of them. And so if you really want to get through to us, then uh, make sure you check out our website and send an email to us. So thank you everyone for watching this and have a nice day.